Thank God, Leviosa. Well done, Thank dear. God. I think we're going to need another feather over here, Professor. So by this point in history, most of you probably have exposure to Feather, which is Game Maker's new IntelliSense slash Syntax Checker slash Linter. And uh, Feather has been one of the more controversial additions to Game Maker in the last couple of years. And most of the controversy doesn't really involve Feather itself being a bad idea, but rather that it was, like, really enabled uh, in Game Maker long before it was ready. Uh, you could really make the argument that it's still not ready, even though it's been almost three years. Anyway, at some point, I would like to make a proper video on Feather uh, where I actually talk about the things that you can do with it and the things that it can do for you. But that's going to really have to wait until some of the more annoyingly persistent issues get ironed out a little bit more. Now, as you all can hopefully imagine, most of what you're going to see here is not Feather working as intended. As the thumbnail of this video implies, this is going to be mainly about putting band-aids on Feather so that you can hopefully get it into a state that's actually semi-useful. I would like to make more videos on Feather in the future once Yo-Yo Games gets it to a state where it's like not kind of a mess. And hopefully that'll happen soon, but at the current moment I don't think anyone can really make any promises as to when that's actually going to happen. So, uh, what is Feather? So as I said, it's the syntax checker slash IntelliSense slash linter uh, for Game Maker that Yo-Yo Games has been working on for a while. If you open a project and you have Feather enabled, you'll probably see something that looks like this. Uh, popping out on the bottom in the Feather Messages tab down here. And uh, this um, this can be a little bit scary when people see it for the first time because uh, what often happens when someone sees, when someone updates Game Maker, opens their project and sees this, is that their reaction is, oh my god, uh, the Game Maker update exploded my project file because, for being honest, that has uh, some precedent for happening. And it doesn't elicit the response that Yo-Yo Games is intending, which is that here is a list of suggestions for things that you can do to make your code better. Uh, Feather has three different levels of like urgency when it comes to its diagnostic messages. Uh, there are suggestions, which are intended to be nice, friendly, hey, you can do this and it might make your code a little bit easier to read sort of uh, messages. But uh, there are warnings, which are a step up from suggestions, which are things that Feather, well, at least thinks uh, could be a problem in some circumstances. Uh, and then all the way at the top, there's errors. And this is things that Feather thinks will probably be a problem. I think it goes without saying that pretty much all of these errors that Feather has identified in, uh, in my code in the WizardX project are not actually errors. Like, the game runs fine. It doesn't break. Pretty much all of these are false positives of some sort or another. Let's go through this a little bit. So because I don't want to make it sound like I'm just completely ripping this thing a new one, um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to give a little mention to some situations where Feather actually could be useful because I want this, ultimately I want this feature of Game Maker to be useful. Uh, that's another really annoying thing that Feather does is sometimes when you click on something down here, it will like completely randomize the order of, like the order in which uh, the errors are listed down here, which makes it really hard to find. Or sometimes even worse, it'll just like completely disappear, uh, which is uh, really annoying. Uh, let's see if I can find the thing that it was yelling about, at me about earlier, because... Alright, if memory serves, it was here. Like, Feather, please, I'm trying to- I'm trying to defend you by starting this video with a situation where you could actually be helpful, and as soon as I do that, when I click on the error message, it just goes away, so I'm gonna have to improvise. So, uh, the thing that Feather was telling me about was the function vector2 takes two arguments, but three were provided. Uh, you might see this if you have a function which takes two arguments, but three are provided. Let's just make something up like this. Uh, this is something that's easy to do by accident in Game Maker, because if you do something like this, if you miss an argument or if you, I don't know, duplicate an argument or insert an extra one for some reason, uh, Game Maker won't necessarily tell you, and oftentimes the only way that you'll notice is that if your game starts behaving strangely. So the fact that Feather will do its best to warn you of that is, um, like, I'm not gonna lie, that is fairly helpful, at least when it's working correctly. Uh, the reason that it showed that error message here is because I have a trailing comma at the end of this argument list. I only actually have two arguments in this function, in this vector2 function, but, uh, because, because I have the trailing comma, Feather thought it was three, I can just delete that and the error would have gone away if it didn't magically disappear into the ether on its own. Um, let's see, let's look at something else. What are some other things that Feather is, uh... It's going to do its best to uh, to warn me about. So, if I go in here, return value of a pure function is not being used. 
Um, wow, Feather, you're 0 for 2 today. I don't know why it's telling me this. Um, wait, really? Okay, that was actually something I did. That's the other thing about Feather. It's got so many false positives that you just kind of assume that, like, when it actually shows you a genuine message. Half the time you just assume that Feather is bugging out at you anyway, so it's kind of a boy who cried wolf situation. It's great. Uh, going back to that, so pure functions in Game Maker are functions like the math functions like sine or uh, log log two, log two, or like the square root function, which uh, will only compute a value. Uh, they won't have any other side effects on the state of the game, like they won't set a value in in the game state anywhere. And like if you were to just say like the square root of ten or something like that. Uh, this would be pretty useless because like you're computing a value and you're not doing anything with it. So Feather will uh, Feather will inform you that the return value of a pure function is not being used. Uh, you can mark your own functions in Game Maker as pure like this, like I'm doing here. I don't know why I was doing this because this is not a pure function. Uh, set show tile grid as setting a value inside the, the program state, which like, yeah. I uh, If I had to guess, I meant to put that here. Uh, I'd like to put the annotation here and, like, put it in the wrong place. Now, strictly speaking, not using the return value of a pure function won't ever break your code, kind of by definition, because, like, calling a pure function won't ever change the state of the rest of the program. Uh, it is kind of a waste of everyone's time if you just have, like, a sine or cosine or square root function being written into the void, because, like, you're doing computations and then not doing anything with the result of that computation. So... Uh, it can be nice for Feather to just, you know, warn you about that. Now, getting into the, uh, say, the messier parts of Feather here. Uh, some other examples. The type undefined appears where array type real is expected. And um, Feather has a really, really hard time with default arguments. And to an extent, I understand that because GameMaker is a very loosely typed language where, you know, vari variable types are just a, a suggestion and initializing things to undefined is just something that people do. Anyway, this is one of the worst parts about Feather uh, at the present moment, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that if you initialize a value to undefined and then set it to, like, some not undefined value later, uh, why did the yellow line disappear? Anyway, pretend the, uh, pretend the error message is still here. Um, Feather will still think the type of the variable is undefined, and then if you try to do something with it, it will, like, give you warnings as if the type of the variable is undefined and not something that has been assigned to. I really wish, and I've told Zach this like five times, and he says it's not in the plans, and I don't really understand why. I really wish undefined would be like a universal variable type, hey. but it doesn't, and instead when you have uh, variables which are initialized undefined in, for example, the create event, um, like this up here, and then set to another value later, uh, no matter where that later is, Feather will, will continue to think the type is undefined. And as a result, I'm gonna say most of the uh, most of the errors in my feather diagnostics log are in a similar vein to this. So, uh, what can you do about this? Well, if you're lucky, because I guess feather just wants to completely ruin the script that I had for this video. Uh, if you're lucky, when you I don't know type something, edit some code, and feather reassesses your project, it'll realize that it made a mistake and it'll correct it. And all of a sudden, uh, that um. That error that was down here in the feather messages list uh, it has just evaporated into thin air. So that's cool, I guess. Uh, if you're not so lucky and the error persists, you can type two slashes feather ignore once gm1041 or whatever the uh, whatever the code for the feather uh, error or warning or suggestion happens to be that you want to ignore. Uh, down here in the side, you can see, yeah, most of mine here are gm1041, which is the the type errors. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, which you might see. Uh, GM2047, unreachable code. That's actually somewhat in, that's uh, somewhat useful uh, because like unreachable code is just, it won't ever be run by the game and it's just wasting space in your project. You could delete this and have absolutely no consequence on like your game, although I'm actually going to leave that there because that was for uh, debugging something. Uh, where was I? So feather directives, uh, these comments that you can leave. Uh, you can say, for example, feather ignore once if you just want to ignore the next instance of the warning or suggestion or error. Uh, you can say feather ignore all, and that will cause all subsequent instances of this error code to be suppressed. Uh, if you want to bring it back, you can say feather restore gm1041. 
or again, whatever the error code happens to be, or uh, there's a couple of aliases. I want to say feather enable uh, will also work for bringing it back feather disable. And that will allow you to uh, to selectively ignore or selectively bring back uh, error codes, that sort of thing. Another thing you can do is say you have a, um, I don't know, say you have like a game maker extension or something like that, like Scribble. Uh, or if you're, this will be specifically important if you're making a game maker extension or if you're using one that was written a long time ago before Feather or something like that. Um, if you want all Feather uh, red squiggles, yellow squiggles, blue squiggles to be ignored inside a um, inside a game maker extension um, because you just want like for your users to not have a bunch of issues popping out in the console uh, when they install your thing. Uh, you can say feather ignore all, and this will just full stop ignore all instances of like any feather uh, message in the rest of this code file. Uh, when you do this, by the way, it's per code file. It's not like it won't apply to your project globally. Uh, so if you do have something like Scribble, pretty much all of Juju's libraries will have feather ignore, fe feather um, disable all or feather ignore all or whatever it is at the top here. Uh, for that very reason, you saw when I uh, when I did that. Uh, my number of warnings dropped from like 70 something to 28. So if you write code that's intended to be shared, I would strongly recommend doing this. Um, I actually don't know if like most of my game maker extensions have this at the top. I should probably check. They probably should. Um, just to like save the sanity of your end users so that they don't have to see a bunch of feather errors and that kind of thing. Let's see. It's also possible to, uh, and I tend to do this in a lot of my projects, it's also possible to tell Feather to ignore errors in a specific code file or in a specific like set of, in a specific folder in your asset browser. Uh, you can see here in, um, in the script that's just called Feather, it doesn't actually have any code in it, but it's got a couple of comments uh, pertaining to Feather. So Feather ignore all in, and then a um, like a directory in my asset browser. So chatterbox input s parts, no state, that kind of thing. Um, feather ignore all in. Uh, slash scribble slash wildcard character. So that's the uh, the asterisk, the multiplication sign, the the wildcard character. Uh, if Juju did not have in uh, in scribble like all of these feather ignore all directives all over the place, uh, I could still tell feather not to like look in there uh, with this. Uh, let's see if I were to look at another one. Uh, I'm gonna guess that. Like, uh, S part probably doesn't have, um, yeah, S part doesn't have the feather directives in the code. So if I were to go and, um, delete the, uh, delete the feather ignore all that points to the S part folder over here. So Snitter's 3D particle system. Uh, you can see that we've got a bunch more things, uh, that it's going to be complaining about, uh, particularly in S part emitter. Uh, there seem to be quite a few. Yeah. And um, if you, uh, for example, import an older, an older game maker extension or library or whatever that doesn't have all of these feather directives in them, uh, you could just tell it to blanket ignore everything in them by doing something like this. So feather ignore all in and then uh, forward slash the folder name in the asset browser forward slash wildcard character. Let's see. So if selectively enabling or disabling uh, errors, warnings, and suggestions in your, in your code doesn't do it for you, uh, you can also go into your game maker preferences and you can go into um, day 1000 something of asking Yo-Yo know, Games to alphabetize the preferences menu because I can't find anything in here ever. Uh, feather settings. Uh, there is a checkbox for enable feather. I believe if you're using a uh, new code editor, also known as Arnold 2, you don't have the option to disable feather because that's just built into the, the code editor for, you know, the new one. So there's actually a lot of uh, things that you can configure in the feather settings. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you um, if you go into message severity, uh, let me go and uh, make this a little bigger. If you go into message severity, you can individually configure uh, each and every one of the error codes, and whether you want it to be a uh, an error, a warning, a suggestion, or to just ignore it entirely. And I'm not going to go into each and every one of these, but I think, for example, if I wanted to go, uh, GM1041 is my uh, the bane of my existence here. If I were to change this from error to warning and hit apply, Feather's going to reanalyze my project. 
And all the instances of GM1041, where are you, have turned into a yellow warning instead of a red error. Um, if I really got sick of looking at that, I could say, I could just say ignore, and that will cause them to go away. I don't know what happened in the code, but I suddenly have like three times as many warnings as I did before. That's great. So if you want to, if, if there's a particular error code that's getting on your nerves like that one, you can just disable it. Let's see, I'm going to put that back because I, I like GameMaker to be like stuck to its default settings when I record my screen so that my IDE looks like what most other people's most likely do. Uh, if it's, um, if you need a nuclear option, and I don't necessarily recommend doing this unless like there's no other choice unless it's really a problem. If you don't want to just full stop turn feather off, you can just go to profile like none. Really? I reopened the preferences window and hopefully that'll fix it. Uh, you can change your uh, your feather profile from type errors, which I believe is the default, to all, which is the strictest, to syntax errors, which is like only stuff that would actually cause your game to not compile, uh, to none. Uh, and that should have all of the... Uh, well, it worked when I hit apply, but it still didn't update the value in all these fields, which is, seems like a bug. Oh my god, game maker. Anyway, disabling Feather entirely like this is very much the nuclear option, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it. Uh, unless, like, it's actually getting in the way of making your game, because Feather can sometimes be useful. And I would much rather just, like, disable the parts of it that are completely broken, and try and keep the parts that actually work, than just, like, getting rid of it entirely. Uh, you can also, by the way, if you, uh, if you right-click on one of these error messages, uh, you can like copy, select all, go to issue, or you can configure the severity of the error message and you can set it to error, warn, suggestion, ignore, or you can open up the, pre the preferences menu where you can do this, like, you know, for all of them. Uh, so again, here, if I was really getting sick of seeing GM1041, I can just, I could just set that to ignore uh, from right here within the feather, me the feather messages box. Um, constant is expected to be one of the following all. Oh, yes. Uh, that's another one of those wonderful Feather type errors, because Feather uh, has a hard time understanding exactly what to do with a, a Juju and a Lens input, um, input library, because it thinks the type of the verb argument is supposed to be like the keyword all, because that's the first thing it checks for, uh, whereas it, it really can be like a number of different things. So pretty much any time you say input check or input check pressed or whatever, um, or anything involving an input verb, it's going to spit out one of these, and it's really annoying. Um, I'm not going to disable this error, because this very same error code also will tell you if you try to, like, draw a set font, uh, I mean, draw a set, like, H, a line, like, F-A, top, or something invalid, like, um, like this, or at least it would. My god, Feather, this should be a warning! Why are you not showing a warning here? Feather, I'm trying to come to your defense and show an example of where you actually work and you just decide to not work. All right. I think that in a nutshell uh, explains like the state that this this feature of Game Maker is in right now. Anyway, I think I've gone on for long enough. I'm going to end this off here. I hope that Feather finally gets into like a production worthy state like sometime within the next year, preferably before Arnold 2 comes out. And if slash when it does, I would like to, to make more videos on it. But for now, I hope this video serves as somewhat of a guide to get Feather a little bit under control. I have no idea why suddenly all of the like yellow, red, and blue squiggles disappeared, though. Because like, they were showing earlier in the video, right? And now it's just not showing any of them. Whatever. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. I like to post videos on Game Maker stuff. Usually the stuff that I post Game Maker videos on is actually like in a working state. But Feather just has to be special, I guess. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard Arts and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. A uh, link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, Head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.